Hello everyone, in this video we're going to create a simple move marker that works on slope terrain as well. Just something to show where the character's moving to and gets cleaned up when he arrives. To start on our move marker we're going to create a material. I'm going to just put it in this materials folder here. Create a new material. Call it M uh, marker. Open it up, and the first thing we'll do is we'll set it to a deferred decal. Because it's going to be a decal. And then we'll make it translucent. I'll just hold 3 on the keyboard and click to add a colour. And we'll change this to a parameter. And this will be the colour. I'm going to make it a... And I'm going to create a hold S and click to add a parameter. And I'm going to call this intensity. This will be like, well, you could call it glow, I guess, if, if you ramp up the intensity enough. And I'm going to multiply those. Change this to 20 for now. Let's change this to a square. That's good. All right, so we want to make this a radial. So we're going to create a radial gradient. And we'll just duplicate this because we're going to create a, a band with it. So we're going to subtract one from the other. Preview this. At the moment it's not doing anything because they're both the same, so we're basically cancelling each other out. What we want to do is create some uh, parameters, so holding S again, and a radius. Another one, call it sharpness. So the radius we're going to put into the bottom one, and we'll set this to or E4. <laughs> you can see that's, so that's now subtracting from the other one correctly. But we're, it's really blurry and crappy, so that's why we want this sharpness. So I'm going to crack this up really high, and I'll put this into the densities. And that's clean that up a bit. What I want to do now, actually I'll, I'll hook this up. So to hook, hook this up, we can just stop previewing that and put this into the opacity, and that gives us our shape. Uh, so what? Uh, if you just want a ring, that, that's fine. You can just just use that. But uh, what I want to do is I want to make it a bit more subtile. I don't want a really big, bright ring. And you can, oh, you can change the thickness here to, you know, make it, make it thinner or, or whatever. But the, I'm going to just cut it down a bit and make it not so obvious. And there's... There's a texture you get with um, the top-down the level prototyping here, so it's just a simple grid texture. So I'm going to bring this in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply, holding M, add a multiplier. I'm going to use the red channel. I'm going to multiply that before I put it into the opacity, and that just gives me the the outer thing, so the grid is sort of acting as a as an opacity mask on it over over the over the actual ring. So what I want to do now is again, this is optional. I want to make it like throb over time. So I'm going to add a time node. I'm actually going to add a scalar for time. This will be how how fast it sort of goes on and off. Let, let's call it speed. Change this to so we, now we need a linear sine wave. This will give us the uh, sort of the on and off, on and off. This is the standard sine wave. That's what it is. So time will go into the value there. Our speed will go into the period. And this option here lets it go from negative one to one rather than from zero to one. So we want to make this true. So I'm just going to drag off this and um, just add a. I don't need it to be a parameter. Static bool. 
and we'll turn that on to true. I'll show the difference of that in a sec. This will go into our density, so uh, we'll add a multiply here. And we'll bring this into here. Replace this with our. There we go, we've got a bit of a, a flash going on. Right. Okay, I might up the intensity because it's so small now. I might make this ridiculous. It's really got a glow to it there. If you, if you take this off, you can see it sort of glows, but it never goes away. So that, that's what that is adding. It's adding that negative A. So it sort of goes away to nothing and then back. All right, that's done. And we'll make an instance of that. And now we just need a an actor for it. So I might actually I'm putting everything in here, so I'll do it in here. Just a generic actor. And we'll call this B uh move marker. So now we need to add our decal to this. So we just need to add a decal component. And add our material to that. So we want that marker material instance. So this is going to need a rotation of 90 on the uh, pitch. Um, I'm going to put it on now, but we'll, we'll need to take it off because I'll, I'll, exp I'll show you later why, but I'll just put it on now so we can see it. So that's obviously too massive. <laughs> Uh, where's the size? So here, let's make it half that size. How does that look? Yeah, probably go half that again. Yeah, that should do for a for a character. All right. So, I'll, like I said, I'm going to take that rotation out because what we're going to do is we're going to allow for slopes of hills and things, and we'll need to apply this rotation after we uh, calculate the rotation of the slope. So what we'll do is we'll just reset this to zero and then we'll come into the begin play. We could do this in C++, it's just so simple. I'm just gonna do it here. So we're gonna get the, the decal. Now we're gonna set the world rotation of that. And then we'll get the actor rotation. So that's all we need there for that. So all, what that's doing is it's going to get the actor rotation. So our, our move marker actor and set the decal component to the same rotation as the actor. So what we can do now in the code, when we figure out where we're going to place it, we can get the terrain rotation and just rotate the actor and it's going to automatically Rotate the decal. So let's go to C++ and start setting that up. So we'll put this in our, in our move section, our command section, since it's going to be part of that. Uh, we're going to need a, a reference to that class. So the, the, the blueprint that we just made, the move marker class. So we'll put that down here and that's just so you're saying that it's going to be a class of actor that we're going to have here and we'll call it move marker class. And then we're actually going to need a, a reference to the move marker when we actually spawn it. And we're obviously going to need a function to spawn it. So let's call that set move marker. We're going to pass in the location that we want to spawn it. So in here, we just need to check that that class that we're, we've actually assigned it in the editor to, to our character because it'll be a variable on our character now. What we want to do is check if, if this character already has a move marker, then we want to get rid of it because we, we're now we're setting the move marker. We could actually check if it exists and move it around rather than spawn it all the time, probably more performant. But for now, we're just going to destroy it and go on to creating a new one. So we're going to need some parameters to spawn our new actor. So 
So we're just saying this is the instigator and always spawn it. So there's, don't have to worry about collision or anything like that. We're going to need a reference to the world. We need a reference to the world every time you spawn an actor. So we're going to make sure we've got that. And then we're going to place this actor in, in our move marker variable. And we're going to use the spawn actor function. So the class we're going to spawn is our, our class that we're, we've assigned. And the location is not going to be directly, this will be the location as in the vector. But what we need here is we want to, we want to get a transform of the terrain so that it will be the position and the rotation. So we're going to create a new function for that and we'll just make that a public one up here. Actually, it doesn't need to be public, it's protected. So like a generic function that we could use for other things. So this is going to be a similar setup to our the line traces we've done in other areas. So the, the position or the location that I'm passing in, I'm going to get a start trace position and an end trace position. Again, check that we've got a world context, or you know, the, the world reference. And then we're going to do our, our line trace. So we're using it, we're passing in our hit result, starting at the line trace, ending at the trace end. So we're trying to hit the terrain here, and we've got this custom channel here for uh, the terrain. Um, I'm not sure if we'll need to, we may need to use visibility on that if we want to walk on platforms and things like that, like we've got in the test map. But we'll do just terrain for now, and then we're just passing in a generic collision parameters there. We don't really need anything in that. And then if we hit something, which we hope we would, but we just need to check that we do hit something, we'll, we need to create a new transform from that hit. So this will be what we're going to return. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention we're going to return a, a full transform out of this function. And if we don't hit anything, we need to return, um, there's, a, there's a thing called transform identity, which is basically like, you know, an empty transform with zero values. All right, so in here, we wanna, we wanna fill out this hit transform. So the first thing we're gonna do is set the location. And what we'll do with the location is we're obviously gonna use the hit impact point, but we wanna, what we'll do is we'll just lift it up a bit. So if we've got like, grass or anything like that like it, it's just up a bit or make sure the decal doesn't flicker in if it's in the ground too much like that so we'll just i'm just going to add a little bit of a, a 0.25 above what it um what the ground actually is and so that's our location and now we need to get the rotation so we'll create a new a new uh, variable for our rotation here and then we'll what, what we need to do is get the normal of the terrain so which which direction is up for the terrain and basically make a rotator out of that compared to the normal up. So that'll give us a, a rotation on the X as to where we're facing sort of thing. So we're rotating around the, the Z up vector. So now we need to add that 90 pitch that we we're talking about. So we, we've set it to the right rotation, but now we just need to add the pitch of 90. So it puts the decal on the side. So it's at the right presentation angle. And then we'll set the rotation and it has to be a Quaternion, so we can in there's the function that transforms that rotation into a quaternion for us, and we'll, so we're setting the rotation on, on our transform. Uh, we don't need to set scale; scale is not going to change, so that's fine to leave as it is. And that's our transform coming back. So now we can take this function back down to our our uh, spawn actor here, and we can get transform of our location that we passed in. And then the last thing is we just pass in our params, which is default anyway. So that should create our move marker angled to the terrain where we want it. So now we need to call this somewhere. We're, we're going to call this when we order the, the move. So we're going to go to command move, which is here. So after the we've sent the move off, we'll set the move marker. And what we're passing in the location from the command data that is where we clicked. And the other one we want to do is in the destination reached, if we do have a move marker, we want to destroy it. So that when the character arrives at their destination, we destroy the move marker. And like I said before, the other option here is just to hide it and make it visible again and not spawn it and move it instead of creating it all the time, just move it around. But it's not a massive process. To, it'll, it'll be a different story if you've got, you know, 100 units or something. Something to keep in mind later. So let's go back to the editor. All right, now back in the editor, we want to go to our character. We need just need to add that marker reference. Uh, go back under AI settings, category. 
the move marker. And now when we uh, order a move, we should get a nice marker. Deletes when he arrives, and if we try and go up a hill, it should be curved to the hill. Now he couldn't make it, but close enough. Um, what I was saying before is we might have troubles going up onto stuff, so we might have to change. He's going up there, but if I click up here, it, it's going through to the terrain. It's not seeing this platform. So if you've got stuff like this in your game, you might have to use a separate, either use visibility channel or you might have to create a separate channel and include things that you want to walk on because with the visibility channel you'll be able to like click on the top of these towers and on boxes if you just use visibility other than that that is simple move marker please don't forget to like if you found this tutorial helpful and subscribe so you don't miss out on future tutorials you can join me on discord or sign up to my patreon where you can get access to all my tutorials early and the project files as well as gain access to behind the scenes on my current game development if you have any questions leave them in the comments thank you for watching see you next time